Hi, uh, right, welcome back. Um, this video very much needs to follow the previous one, so if you've not seen it, go check it out. Um, the one in which I discover quite how bad uh, my exhausts are uh, in relation to where they need to be for noise. And we're running at what, 123, 124 decibels um, at the RPM that needs to be for the IVA. Uh, that is no good. Even tick over was, uh, I think it was 109, 110. So, um, Options I talked about at the beginning of the last video before I knew that uh, what I was doing wasn't going to work was uh, to basically have a large single muffler on either side or single silence, whatever you want to say, which will act um, well, which will bring down the noise to the 99 decibels at 4000 ish RPM that it needs. Um, for me, that was going to be a real last resort because of the way that my exhausts have been built with the headers that. You know, were kind of put together by a friend here. They're not perfect, like they're very much the system that was built fits and works okay as the system that was built. But now to have to change over the two side pipes on either side for one large, probably six inch diameter by about, I think it's about 800 mil long single silencer to a um, single three inch, probably a three inch bore in it and a three inch tip. Um, that's going to be a pain because the way my exhaust headers, they, the two are almost, I'll show you, them, they almost end right underneath the sill um, as the car, as it exits at the outside of the car. So I won't be able to get those two into one, into the exhaust in that short space. So with that and a lot of time just sitting, looking at it and going through options in my mind, I think I'm going to actually have to rebuild the headers. And I can't weld. Uh, as has been proven, but I do have the gear and I, it's not beyond me to learn. So I've got a feeling that I, well, I've got a feeling I'm pretty sure now I'm going to rebuild the headers. I'm going to do one at a time, um, which is a huge step backwards in a sense, because right now the car runs, I can put an exhaust on it. I can drive it. It just won't pass the test. So it, what's the point? Like, there's no point in keeping it as it is because it's never going to be road legal. So yeah, I think it's going to be a case of redesign the headers. Um, if I show you the headers now and I'll keep talking and I can talk about what I'm doing as I show you. Okay, so if you've seen the videos before, this is um, one set of headers which you've seen plenty of times before. So my first issue was they worked fine. You know, they were done by a friend on the island, like I said, um, very limited to where I could get the car. Um, I've never really liked them for their design you know they they just fit a purpose whereas the car is all very much going to be about how it looks and you know, quite rightly the amount of time it's going to take before i get it finished um i didn't really enjoy how they finish right down here you, it's very hard to slide the exhaust over and get access to um to the clamps that we've used i didn't like the clamps that we used which were just these you know new bolt horrible sort of sandwich clamps whatever you're going to call them i preferably would like to have either some nice slot over exhaust styles with the springs. You know, you have the, the big heavy duty springs that clip them together and hold them in. Um, if it came to it, a flange on either one would be okay or V-band connections. I think I just need to bite the bullet. Take a pair of um, headers off, take the exhaust wrap off so I can get to it. Um, take some measurements of what the pipe diameter is and then go back and just order a ton of pipe and a ton of bends um, the main thing is if I can find two into ones, which ultimately I want the two inch at the bottom, and I think this is one and a half, so one and a half, one and a half into two, that should be fine. That should be an off the shelf part, two of those either side. Um, and then from those two, two inch fittings, I'd like to find a two into one connection, which is two inches and then ending in three. Right. It's exhaust time. So I've just unpacked my box from Allenox and I will show you it now. Look at these goodies. So if I can make sure you're seeing the right thing. So we've got some one and a half inch uh, 90 degrees, which is gonna come out of my um, manifolds. These I've had for a while, uh, flanges, sorry. Uh, some straight one and a half, so I can create the, the headers out of that. I've got some one and a half collectors, which goes into two and a half, okay. And then I've got some two and a half 
obviously the male and females, they'll fit together, uh, V-band rings, into a twin twos, okay? I'll explain the point of that in a minute. Uh, some extra two inch V-bands, uh, four of those, some two and a half, um, 45 degree, and a load of these little clips, uh, you know, the, I can't remember what they're even called now, but basically you weld them on and they hold the, the pipes in place once they're pushed in. Um, yeah, so ultimately, oh, and I had a good old piece of steel I ordered, which was designed to form a plug. Um, well, basically the idea was I didn't know how to get a round pipe to fit these sort of squarish holes on my flanges. So um, I made a little bit of a wood plug just to see if if it would work, the idea would work so that that would fit inside there. Um, because yeah, the idea basically is to be able to get a round um, pipe into kind of a squarish hole uh, without deforming it too badly, without beating the hell out of it. And the plan is with some of these are gonna have to be cut quite close to the actual, um, well, the actual bend. So I needed some, some way of doing it under a bit of control. So anyway, long story short, I've got a piece of steel and I've just been, well, used a paddle wheel on a grinder and reduced it down. Did a little couple of little tests. Um, uh, so it was basically about as good as a fit as I will get with the one and a half inch um, pipe into there. So that will be able to be tight. Oh, crikey, can't hold it. Tidied up um, when it's welded in, but it'd be, the idea was to push it on the inside and do some welding around the inside. Have it, you know, set half, half the thickness of the actual flange. Um, and then finish the weld to make it nice and neat around the outside. That gives me enough room to get to these bolts. Because a nice thick weld around the outside would mean that I can't get to my bolts, which is a bit of a problem um, that happens. So let me explain to you why I've got uh, all this sort of stuff. So the plan is, um, huh, this is, well, this is the plan I've got, whether it works out or yet to be seen. Start one side of the engine, flange onto the block, and the idea then is to bring, use four of these pipes, the outside edges will be, so the, the extreme side, so the furthest forward and furthest aft one, will be a 90 straight away that brings the pipes into the middle. The two from the middle will, well one will come straight down, one of them will come in slightly, ultimately to bring in to a collector. Um, if I bring the camera here, rather than just babbling, we should be able to understand. So, where are we? Right, so ultimately you've got the kind of mess I've got now. I think you can see, I can't see what you can see. The plan is to put this collector somewhere in the middle here, not too far away from the block, and bring those pipes neatly into here. Probably having the second one back come straight into this bottom one. And then the one next to it come as quickly as I can into the other bottom one, and the furthest forward and furthest aft to come with one 90 degree off the block and one 90 degree into here. Um, and nice and neat. That sits this then in the middle, further down. So we come back again. So that gives me a set of headers, um, which will fit what I want and end up with the collector where I want it. So the point then would be for the IVA and for track use, I need a nice quiet exhaust, <laughs> um, if it's possible. So my understanding was replace these two two inch straight through pipes with a single two and a half inch cord, um, six inch diameter sort of silencer. Uh, yeah, to get to basically to, to reduce the, um, well, reduce the noise, it's simple as that. So I wanted to be able to do that, but also I wanted to be able to change over back to my um, road going side pipes, which is the look I really wanna have as much as possible. So by having a V band on the collector, I can immediately, V-band on the 45 degree, two and a half inch tube. that will come out the side of the car, straight into, you know, through another set of V-bands into the six inch diameter, two and a half inch diameter core silencer. So that's one configuration. The second configuration is the two inch uh, twin pipe into a two and a half inch. So ultimately they can connect, not that they will connect directly, there will be an intermediary piece, no doubt. And this will come out the side of the car just before it comes out the side of the car and each of the two existing side pipes which are a two inch core will go onto these so i should have those two on a set um yeah that's basically that's the plan but i'm not going to worry about the two side pipes just yet i just want to get the headers done with the collector um 
section of the two and a half inch to get it into a position on the side of the car where I can put one single pipe that will get me my noise uh, limit for IVA. Um, yeah, and this is the materials that I've got. Um, so I've got enough collectors to do both sides. I only got enough for the 90s to do one and a little bit of straight. Probably enough to do both, but I got it in one go. I just need to control what I was spending at the moment to make sure that I can do it before I go and blow loads on getting all the extra bits and pieces. Um, but seeing as these are being made for me, I just got them done in one go because I will be using this system, whether I'm the one who makes it or not. Um, yeah, so there we go. I think that's about as much explanation as I'm going to give. Um, there we go. So uh, that's that. Basically, now I need to knock off the headers that are on there take them away, put my flanges on, and then start the kind of mock-up. So I think I'll, I'll knock up some kind of little clamp, uh, a steel rod with a G-clamp to hold the collector where I want it off the flange. So that I'll be building from a known point to a known point. Um, obviously there's a little bit of movement in that one, but ultimately if I build it, if I put it where I want it, then it's gonna be a lot easier than building what we did when we built that one originally, all the exhausts that are on there just kind of just guesswork and thin air knowing we had to end somewhere through the hole in the side of the car um so yeah this is in a nice place lined up with the exit to the side of the car we already have now i can then work from this onwards once the headers are done so that's kind of that's the game at the moment it's gonna take me bloody ages so i don't know how long this will be before this video is actually out but i'll give you an idea it's the 11th of may <laughs> today um <clears throat> let's see Anyway, so I will probably come back to bits and pieces as I start to, um, well, once I've got the first setup, like I said, I'll probably show you again, keep you involved, but I'm also not going to just do a time lapse of a month of me just messing around. So, there we go. Cut to the next scene, which is probably hours in front of where I am now. Okay, and just, right, you can see that. Okay, so what I've done here... Um, yeah, well, I'll explain it before you think I'm crazy. So I've just laid out the flange there. I've done a 90 degree line. So I know the face of the flange is parallel to that line. This is 90 degrees down. <clears throat> so ultimately, this is what it's going to be like. You're going to have two 90 degrees. These will be shortened um, to get them nice and tight. This one has to be right in tight because of the, um, the space between the block and the footwell in the car. Anyway, so this ultimately, these will be short. Well, I'm not cutting anything yet. And the collector will have the two top collected pipes but that parallel line there is in line with the well okay you can see that so the edge of this um whether straight because this effectively is going to be a straight pipe this is the one given straight pipe so with that in mind that will be going down to this bottom hole here so i'm going to line this up on here with that bottom line you can see it there Anyway, I'll do it. So that's about that kind of location. So that's the straight line, which is in line with the outside edge. Now this one, um, let me down a little bit. I mean, anyway, it doesn't really make any difference. So ultimately, that is the that's the shape this head is going to be, with these shortened to get this whole lot to be smaller. Um, obviously, with these cut at some point there. So these these all these will both join. And again, yeah, these will be cut on a piece of straight. So that's the shape. And then I can decide how much length I actually because these are now fitted all the way to the recess there. So I will decide on the overall length oh, I want from the, um, the headers to where I want the V-band to be. So it's just an idea of it. And obviously, once this one's cut there, out the way, um, I can run the straight pipe. That'll be the first one I actually fit into here and probably tack. So it's actually... This is not the flange, there's one on the engine that I showed you a minute ago. Um, so yeah, that'll be the straight one, which will locate everything from the bottom one to there. Once that's in, then all of these things will actually be trimmed to fit and then we'll adjust the length. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, it's, really, it's nice and easy just being able to push things in. Um, hey ho, yeah, so I'll just show you quickly. So there we go, I put one flange on the engine um, and yeah, I will work out roughly where I want that here um, oh, to line up with access hole there. And then that's where the big pipe 
will be, which is the important one for getting that all important IPA. Anyway, keep going. And there you go. So uh, just quick, I just oh, sorry, I just quickly um, cut the lower piece down, shape the tip a bit to get it in um, into that hole. That, um, second, um, sorry, the second exhaust port back. Um, I popped a bit of metal in here to get the approximate angle because this is too heavy for that to keep itself in place. Oh, killing it in place. So that is, I think if you can see, about maybe a little bit low, 90 degrees to the actual flange. But I mean, there's nothing to say that it's got to be 90 degrees. I will play around with the angle of all the cuts in the end to get that to where I want it to be. As you can tell from there, it's still a bit high. I do actually want it a bit lower. So I might end up angling the cut in the end of this um, straight piece. But ultimately, that is approximately what we're going to end up with here with those 90, oh, the 90s. Yeah, so you see what they're actually going to be really quite short. More governed by this side because I need to get it there. Um, well, to be honest, I can, I can step this off um, as much as I want by reducing these. Or as a tester, I can always cut a slightly longer piece here to bring it back further. Um, we'll just have a bit of a play around. I have got six half meter lengths of the one and a half inch um, pipe purely because there was going to be quite a lot of fucking about to get this right. So yeah, my slight concern at the moment is getting from that port to here. So I'm not sure if I'm going to come out of a 290s close again. Or I don't know yet. I don't know. But um, certainly getting it set on three of the four to begin with will be fine once it's set i can just drop this one out um pull it out here take it away from there to work on the bottom one it's quite good to be a teacher there we go um so yeah that's just a, a slight update i'll keep fiddling but i'm almost going to call it quits for the day um so we'll work out where to cut these and where to get the the 90 out of there be nice to have um rough orientation of that but we won't orientate these in here um, until we know the angle of the whole thing. So yeah, I will crack on still. So I've just been looking at um, the length that I can cut these here. Um, and to get it beyond the curve, the radius there, and enough to be able to go through um, and be welded, to, well, I'll be welded just be just on the inside, say halfway through. Um, basically it's, it's 80 mil from the face of here to that cut line any less and I'll be going in that um, the port at an angle it's still on the on the bend I don't want to do that so 80 mil and also I had to uh, this is the concern back here so off the face of that so you see well I can tell you anyway it's about 90 mil to the footwell so 80 of which it's about five or six mil will go in, I say five mil will go into there. So I have about 15 mil clearance um, from this footwell, which I don't remember exactly how much clearance was on the one I've just taken off, but it isn't a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to accept that that is sufficient. I don't really know um, if there's any minimum distance there. There's a little bit of heat. <clears throat> It'll be ceramic coated when it's all done. So, uh, and it's not a large area, it's literally just going to be this sort of section here um so yeah that's what i'm going to accept and if i'm going to cut that at 80 mil then i'll cut that end at 80 mil to give the a uniform um shape as it comes out um and then yeah that's basically what i'm going to do i think i'm going to trim them up um now and i can then uh, shape the ends a little bit using my where's my plug gone oh it was here oh there it is right in front of me here's my plug that's obviously not going to be very easy to get in um, but we'll we'll do a few taps and see if we can shape it up a little bit. If not, the longhand way of shaping these is to just pinch them in the vise, um, squeeze it, just square them off slowly over a little period of time, and they'll go in. It obviously doesn't have to be perfect because it will be welded front and back. But anyway, that's um. Then they will be the pieces that these will weld to. So once they're tapped in and lined up, you know, then I will work out exactly where I want to do the cuts on this um with this lined up for that um that middle one so yeah making progress it's not um it's not taking all that long to get the sort of fabrication ideas done um anyway we'll see how it goes right so a little bit of a not an issue but a little thing of a 
Okay, so a little challenge, not an issue, a challenge um, for this now is the angle on which these side ones have to slope down. Because as you can tell, the bottom of the collector is in line with the um, the flange because that's straight in line. And these need now need to drop down. So <clears throat> in order for me to shape the ends to fit in there, I, need, I can't just squeeze them because then they won't rotate because they're also going to be squared off. So I need to have them at the right um, the right orientation to line up with where this is supposed to be and then square them. So to get that, I've just had a little think about it over here. So I've drawn around, and you can see that I've just drawn around that flange there. So if I line up this with the bottom hole directly over the inside of that, or well, anyway, if I do it without camera. Um, okay, so that is... Now we'll, I'll do it more accurately in a minute, but for the sake of showing you guys. So that's lined up now over that hole, which effectively is the same as it was in there, but just reduced the distance. Now I've just marked, I'm going to call it top dead center, TDC, on these. Um, so basically then I need to put this onto there and orientate it directly to where that's going to be. And then I can mark... Well, there's, let me orientate it there, line it up directly to there, and then mark on the pipe, which I actually just did when this was accurately placed. So, yeah, that should allow me then to when I plug this with my little um, butt plug, shall we say, um, that will allow me to have a, a mark on it, which is top. So when I line it up, it allows me now to mark the orientation when I start having a go at shaping this end. So when it pushes in, it should automatically push in and fit at the angle it needs to be to mate up with the extension that's gonna come out of here because that's the, the same angle no matter what, um, what distance off because it's only the depth. Woo, the depth that's actually gonna change. So um, just making up as I go along, as you can imagine, well, as I've done for the rest of the car. So I'm gonna have a go at that. I'm gonna redo this again, line up properly, make sure this is parallel because obviously I want this collector when you look at it not to be wanky, to be completely parallel. Um, more parallel to the engine and horizontal to the ground, if that's the way the orientation is going to be. Because um, nothing worse than having a look in here and seeing this and it being, you know, pissed. <laughs> and if it had to be pissed for it to work, because I'd made a faux bar, um, foo bar, fuck up, shall we say, um, then I'd want to correct it. So I will make sure that that's parallel, um, which will most probably just be parallel to the ground because the chassis is going to be parallel to the ground. So, yeah, about that. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with that. Um, well, it already looks nicer than, <laughs> than what's come out. So, yeah, uh, and decent clearance there for heat. I mean, this is obviously not the side. That's the side that looks like an octopus is having an orgy. Uh, that will be more of an issue, but, uh, you yeah, know, we start on the, on the practice side. So, yeah, anyway, cracking on. Okay, so the latest update now, so this is the next day. So I have cut this 90 and that 90. I haven't tacked anything, that's why I've got this under there just to line up. So if you look at it, that's the, this is the straight piece we did a minute ago or yesterday. Um, this one needs to join up with this, but actually when you look at it that way, it will interfere. So I need to bring it along 45 down and then in um, which I'm waiting to get those bits for. Um, so yeah, this is the next bit. So I'm gonna take these out, lay them flat, give them a couple of tacks, put it aside, and then um, yeah, carry on. So that's just a quick update for you. And there you go. So that's tacked, a couple of tacks on there, offered it back up. Getting these in and out of these um, swage points are getting tougher as I, every time I do it. I'm sure I'm putting some scratches obviously inside it from moving it around. So yeah, that's a bit of a fight to get it in and out. So in general, that's the location. These are just pushed into the flange. Obviously there's no, there's no fixing because I yet to decide the exact angle of this, which will give me, um, uh, yeah, scope to, um, to cut the ends or at least tack them at whatever angle I want. Anyway, by the by on that one. Um, yeah, that went better than I thought, but that's going to be the simplest one with the two 90s. Whereas this one now is going to take uh, a 45. I'm going to have, a, come, have it come out, have a 45, and have another 45 to return to the lower one here. 
um, just because well it's going from they're parallel so if I take it 145 for bring it back one other 45 it should be easy it's just the length and obviously I've got adjustment in here uh, I don't have 45 so that's the only problem there so I'll get on to Alanox and get some more oh perfect <laughs> there you go that shows how it wasn't held in place and the last one is again a 90 out of there and then it's a 45 up um, to the top and it comes into the top one I can yeah so that's similar to this but it just joins with a 45 so yeah I'll carry on um, I'm going to trim that 90 and get it to um, push that one in place in there and show you again now I've just put that back into place with the extra pipe there and that one in there so you can see where the 45 will go um, obviously I'll cut that one back trim that back to get that 45 um, and then yeah, the one underneath will be two 45s um, which should just be literally one weld because the 45 I'll shape the end it will come out and go down and on that leg I'll cut it and then the next one to return it back into um, parallel with the port will be the next cut and push it into the swage so yeah just got to get them now but I'm pretty happy with how that's gonna gonna be should make it look a lot neater well it definitely got neater than it was before um, yeah there we go okay there's another another update for you guys um, it's gonna be a luxury to watch this video and think it's all happened <laughs> in one go so I'm another day in now um, yeah what I was waiting for was some 45s um, from Alanox um, when I started I think I would explained on the last bit that I needed a 45 to take this down to return in on that and I needed two 45s for here so oh look so you see my my tacking yesterday i blew a bit there there we go I'm, I'm sure it's all fixable so anyway yeah i um yesterday when i got the 45s in i made this piece i'm actually really happy with it i think it looks really kind of smart now so yeah happy with that it's a bit of a pain to try and get the obviously the angles cut um yeah ultimately it's, it's literally a cut at the bottom to get that length a cut there on both of them to get there and, and the trim there so happy days. So what I've got to do now is create the 45 for here um, and match up with that, which in itself is going to be a little bit tricky, but hey ho. Um, yeah, and I was finding cutting the tubes a bit of a pain to, to mark them reliably all the way around. What I did was I cut a section of an old sanding belt that I just literally just ditched um, and it's thick enough. So when I wrap it around, um, let's show you. When I wrap it around a piece of pipe, if it lines up straight, well that's not lined up straight when you say but when it's lined up straight it gives me a nice reliable line to draw around that's um well the same or it's parallel all the way around the, the pipe so i've been doing that um, i don't have any fancy tools or tricks for that that's just it so yeah i will continue now as the aim of it is to get this one cut and tacked in yeah anyway um that's a challenge for for this morning so i'll come back to you when i've hopefully made some progress Hi there, um, so this is me from the end of the video, which you haven't seen yet, but I've just realised when I've put the video together, this is about 45, 46 minutes long for the whole exhaust process because I've just kept tacking bits on where I've made progress. So I've decided to stop the video um, here, make it into two parts. I'm not quite sure where this is going to be put in yet, but that's it, this is the video. This is the end of the first half, and then there'll be another video released probably at the same time for part two. Make it a bit more bite-sized because no one wants to watch 45, 46 minutes of drivel from me. So thanks for watching the first part and uh, click on the second.